the Mackey Auditorium is well known for being the haunted place on campus, but the story behind that haunting is even more chilling. But before we get started, welcome to True Crime with Maneater. If you love all things true crime, including missing person cases, cold cases, and just the strange happenings of the world, you've come to the right place. Be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss a video upload. Let's get started. Before we get started, I do want to note that the details of this crime are incredibly disturbing, so viewer discretion is advised. Elora Jacquet was a 20-year-old woman attending the University of Colorado, Boulder. She was studying zoology in hopes of one day becoming a biology teacher. She had just started learning how to ski, and often she worked various jobs and earned extra cash by picking fruit from cherry trees or babysitting to help pay for her contact lenses. Not only was she a great student, but she put a lot of time and effort into her church. But all of this would change in July of 1966. On July 6, 1966, Elora was having her lunch and bird watching on the grass near Mackey Auditorium as she waited for the children she had been babysitting to get out of a movie theater that was next to the college. As Elora's bird watching, something seems to get her attention and she makes her way to the west tower of the Mackey Auditorium room. The remains of her lunch, the binoculars she was using to birdwatch, and her wallet were found near a little irrigation channel that runs between two buildings. Unfortunately, her body would be discovered later that afternoon by a couple of students in the isolated organ recital room of the west tower. Once these students found her body, they also found a grisly crime scene. They ran, they got help, and when police arrived, they realized something seriously troubling happened here. Alora had been raped and beaten so violently that her teeth had been knocked out, and it seemed that somebody had tried to set her on fire. But it didn't work because of how much blood was left behind. As the police are examining the room, they realize that Alora had tried to crawl away from her attacker. The police say that the attacker grabbed her by her feet and swung her. And they drew this conclusion because there was blood splattered as high as seven feet on most of the room's walls. Obviously, this shook not only the university community, but everybody in Colorado. This was an incredibly violent crime that happened on a safe campus. This young 20-year-old girl is bird watching. She's eating her lunch. She's just relaxing. And suddenly, she's met with just incredible violence. They knew they had to do something. For the next 30 days, police would interview about a thousand suspects. They still really had no leads. And then they would come across a janitor that was working at the college, and his name was Joseph Dreyer Morse. And then suddenly, they arrested the 37-year-old man. They would soon learn that on the day of Elora's murder, that Joseph Dreyer's two teenage daughters had seen him carrying a bucket full of bloody clothing. They also found evidence that he had been in that auditorium when they found a bloody handprint matching his. Witnesses would say that they saw Joseph Dreyer Morris drinking at a bar near campus that day. And as police are questioning witnesses, they soon realize that Joseph Dreyer Morris was not a calm and friendly janitor. In fact, when he drank, he became incredibly violent and incidents of violence would come to light during questioning of these witnesses. This janitor would continue to claim his innocence throughout the entire trial, even after he was sentenced to life in prison. And then in 1980, he would make a confession. He would say that he met Elora when she worked at the admissions office, but he'd never said how he lured her up the winding stairs of the West Tower and into the organ recital room. The thing is, Elora was a singer and pianist, and she just loved music. So many think that he may have made some sort of excuse based on that, maybe that he wanted to learn piano, or maybe he needed help moving something, something that would get the kind and sweet and loving girl to help him. He would say that once he got her up those stairs and into the room, he made sexual advances at her, which she had rejected. He would say, things got out of hand, but refused to say anything more, and died in prison in 2005, at the age of 77. 
cases like this bother me to no end because this young woman who is just starting her life, she's getting an education, she's at her school bird watching and eating lunch, and she's murdered viciously. I mean, this was a vicious and unhinged attack on this poor girl. It always makes me question screening processes for, obviously, positions at colleges or, you know, in cases like working at apartment complexes when you have access to other people's homes or schools or things like that. What is this application process? Are we not screening people thoroughly? Did he not have any violent crimes? Did he not have any crimes in general? I mean, they did mention violent incidents when he was drinking at the bar. Were none of those reported? Was he never arrested? Had he never attempted to lure another woman into an empty room? Had he never made sexual advances to another student on campus? And if he had, why wasn't he fired right away? Elora's mother, Opal, kept a three-ring binder packed full of her daughter's stuff. In that binder, she has a scrapbook of her report cards, pages from her school planner, Bible certificates, and she even has a wedding anniversary card that Elora had bought for her parents, but the card is blank. Elora had purchased the card and died six months before her parents could celebrate their 22 years of marriage, and that just shows how thoughtful she is. I mean, it was six months before their anniversary and she found the perfect card and had put it away just to make sure she had it. Not only was she just a good, thoughtful, loving daughter, but she loved to sing and she often did duets at the church and she played piano. She was a really great musician. Her parents ran a wholesale flower business and after their daughter's death, the family did move to Guam basically to cope with the loss. They had two other children and they really wanted to make sure that they were going to be okay through all of this. And she mentioned that the pain lingers, it doesn't go away. And she mentioned that her husband Frank had a hard time for 40 years. She said he was not doing well, enough said. He just couldn't talk about his daughter. And I can imagine that as a parent, going through something so traumatic and losing your child, it would be incredibly hard to talk about it. Many people today believe that the Mackey Auditorium is haunted. Of course, that doesn't surprise me because a violent crime occurred there. So people often believe that spirits are, you know, left behind or stuck behind. Mackey's namesake regained the respect of the community in 1980 when the auditorium was included as a contributing building in the Norland Quadrangle National Historic District. The auditorium's renovation into a concert hall in 1985 furthered its acoustics and ambience, as well as providing new and larger seats. People often claim to see a woman walking, or they hear piano music when nobody's in the room, or just sometimes they hear it fluttering out of the building. Unfortunately, that means the Mackey Auditorium became this infamous place where you can go and try to see ghosts and hear the piano music playing while nobody's there. I think people fail to remember that a young, talented, full-of-life woman was brutally assaulted and murdered there. So it's kind of disheartening that people want to go and investigate it when, honestly, they should just let it be. But that's it for today, guys. If you like this video or any other video on my channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss a video upload. If there's a case you'd like me to cover, pop in the comments below and I'll be sure to get to it. In the meantime, check out some other videos on my channel while you wait for the next upload and I'll see you then.